No worries. Senator Lathrop, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Um, today I introduce LR-424. And I begin this introduction by making an observation about our responsibilities as members of the legislative branch. And maybe it works well that there was some question about these committees in the last, uh, before the last vote. It is not, we, we do not enter into oversight by intruding into the executive branch. Colleagues, it is our duty to provide oversight in the constitutional form of government with three branches of government. It is the duty of the legislature to make policy, and it is the duty of the legislature to provide oversight, and we should not be bashful about that responsibility. Historically, these committees have been set up. They have worked in a thoughtful way. They have worked consistent with our nonpartisan traditions and they have led to important reforms. The advantage to these legislative special committees is they include members of various committees across the spectrum so that we have members of different committees, like appropriations, who are in a position to help initiate and pass the reforms necessary to bring about the change these committees ultimately determine must be made. This particular committee is not put together to politicize Nico Jenkins or the tragic death of four people. It is put together for two reasons. One, I believe the public deserves to know how Nico Jenkins was permitted to walk the streets of the city of Omaha and ultimately be responsible or allegedly responsible for the death of four people and we need to know more about the administration of the Department of Corrections. I have on a, num on a number of occasions and earlier suggested and encouraged you to read the Ombudsman's report on Nico Jenkins. I have told you before that the BSDC report from the Department of Justice was the most difficult thing I've ever read. This has to be a close second. Nico Jenkins is an awful person by anybody's standards, and this committee and my remarks are not intended to suggest that the killing of four people in Omaha was somehow the result or the fault of the Department of Corrections, but we should know more about this, the circumstances of his incarceration and his release. And I will tell you, if you look through the report of the Ombudsman, you will find this in summary. You will find that Nico Jenkins was put into the Department of Corrections and repeatedly, repeatedly said he wanted to get out and kill people. Told every mental health professional that came into contact with him that he was listening to the Egyptian god of war and that he, when he was going to get out, he wanted to kill. And the Department of Corrections and the health professionals that saw him began to quibble. They quibbled about whether he had a psychiatric disorder or a personality and a behavioral issue. Before he left, when he knew that his release date was approaching, he asked to be committed. And I'm going to, at the risk of reading something that you've already read, I want to read two paragraphs from the report of the Ombudsman, so you get an appreciation for the problem um, that we hope to address with LR-424. It begins on page 21. It's notable that Mr. Jinx Jenkins sent an informal grievance to TSCI Warden Fred Britton on February 20, uh, 17, 2013, just a few months before Jenkins was scheduled to be released from custody. In the case of that grievance, Mr. Jenkins stated that he was requesting emergency protective custody and removal from segregation. Jenkins also said he was requesting psychiatric hospitalization for severe psychosis, uh, conditions of derangement episodes of my schizophrenic disease. Jenkins also claimed that he was suffering psychological and emotional trauma in his current confinement and specifically referred to the Nebraska Mental Health Commitment Act in connection with his appeal. The response to this rather extraordinary grievance in which an inmate who was soon to be released from custody was, in effect, asking to be sent to the Lincoln, Lincoln Regional Center 
was disappointing. In place of a response from the warden, the grievance was answered by a sergeant who replied, the grievance does not meet the criteria which governs the emergency grievances as you are in no immediate danger of being subject to substantial risk of personal injury or serious or irreparable harm. In other words, instead of being given the substantive answer, Jenkins' grievance was simply dismissed on technical and procedural grounds. He sent another one to TSC Warden, TSCI Warden Britain, February 18, 2013. In that grievance, he was complaining that his mother had been told that her visit, visiting privileges at TSCI were being suspended for 30 days. In this February 18th grievance, Mr. Jenkins explained his mother was writing down a petition of notification under the Nebraska State Law Mental Health Act to be submitted to the county attorney of Johnson County for direct forwarding to the Mental Health Board. In other words, he's trying to get himself committed a couple of months before he leaves. And once again, Jenkins' grievance to the warden was answered by a sergeant who replied, the grievance does not meet the criteria which governs emergency grievances it is wrong to call it a comedy of errors, but what was going on with this inmate, every time they put him in solitary confinement for half the time he was there, and every time he talked to a mental health professional, he told them that he was going to get out and hurt people. He wasn't going to just hurt his own people. He was going out to West Omaha to go door to door and kill some people in West Omaha, and they would not commit him to the regional center. Instead, they released him and we need to know why, and the public needs to know why. And I'll tell you in a bigger picture way why this committee is more than just about Nico Jenkins. We have in the Department of Corrections a perfect storm. It is a perfect storm because we are at an over 160 percent of capacity in the men's correctional system, which puts us in the sweet spot of lawsuits from inmates, and we're going to get one. I, we know we're going to be the subject of a lawsuit, and they'll win if we don't do something with corrections. Judiciary Committee is attempting to make reforms, and answers to our questions are hard to come by. They are equivocal. They're non-answers. We can't tell what programming is there. We can't tell what programming is needed and what we can do to make people safe in, in, in uh, Nebraska. We have a study undertaken by the governor to determine what our facility needs are. What would it cost us to build a new prison? That's one track. Shall we respond to being at 160 percent of capacity by building another prison? And the legislature, the governor, and the chief justice have signed a letter to bring CSG in to do a study to reform corrections. We don't need both. It's going to be one or the other. But we need information. And this legislature is going to have this year a significant undertaking with the beginning of those reforms. But next year, this legislature is going to have to proceed with the full knowledge of what's going on in corrections, a full knowledge of their capacity to provide services, to get men ready to return to the public. And we will not know it having hearings in the Judiciary Committee where we get non-answers. This committee is necessary so that the people of the state understand what happened with Nico Jenkins to determine whether he is one example, is he the canary in the coal mine, and this is going to happen if we don't, more of this will happen if we don't make reforms and changes. One minute. And is he a symptom? Is he a symptom of the problems that exist in corrections besides or in addition to the overcrowding, I believe this is one of the most substantial responsibilities of this legislative body to get to the bottom of the corrections, which is in clearly, clearly needs the attention of the legislature and the oversight we can provide. And for that reason, I would encourage your support of LR 424. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lathrop. Senator Chambers, you're recognized. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the legislature, I intend to speak more than once on this resolution.